Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you're having a fantastic Tuesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing I want to talk about today, because there's so much negativity in the news, is a positive story. A positive story about my new personal hero, Elizabeth Sweeney. Elizabeth Sweeney is a 33-year-old American woman. She's been freestyle skiing since 2013, and she's had the goal of making the Olympics. And this year, she did just that. She went to the Olympics, but you may not have heard of her because she finished 24th, last place. This in the women's ski halfpipe. And as far as why she ended up in last place, it was because she really didn't attempt any tricks. I can't show you the video for legal reasons, but when she would get to the top of the half pipe where people would normally do tricks, she would just then go back down. For her two runs, she received the scores 30 and 31.4. And I laugh because her best score was still 13.6 points behind 23rd place. And that was Denmark's Layla free selling and she slipped on both runs. So the question becomes, well, why did Elizabeth Sweeney not do any tricks and how the hell is she in the Olympics? Well, my friends, it is because Elizabeth Sweeney is a damn American hero. A woman with the very American mindset of it doesn't matter if I'm qualified to do it, I'm gonna figure out a way how to get there. Elizabeth, knowing she didn't have a good chance of competing with the US team, originally competed for Venezuela, where her mother is from, later switching to Hungary, where her grandparents were from. And she actually ended up becoming Hungary's first Olympic freestyle skier after qualifying both through the country's quota system, as well as placing where she needed to place among 13 World Cup halfpipe contests. Now, when you hear that she placed where she needed to place, you go, oh, okay, well, she beat out other athletes. Not really. Pretty much every event she went to, she placed placed last or near last. But Elizabeth realized she could game the system. According to the rules, to qualify for the half pipe at the Olympic Games, athletes must record a number of top 30 finishes. And so what Sweeney ended up doing was just going to competitions with fewer than 30 competitors. And so by technicality, she was satisfying the requirement. In fact, the best Sweeney has ever placed is 13th out of 15. And so she met those basic requirements. She raised funds through online donation sites so she could pay for all of this. And according to reports, there were a few competitors that had to be pulled out of the Olympics due to injury. There were there's the limit on how many skiers a single country can have in one same event. And then you pair that with some reallocation rules within the Hungarian Ski Federation designed to balance men and women's competitors, and Sweeney got through. Now, because Sweeney was able to pull this off, there are people that are angry and also people calling for change. A Hungarian team spokesman telling Reuters, we, the Hungarian Olympic Committee, have to learn the lessons from this case, and we must consider rethinking our nomination procedures. We shall be doing this with the assistance of the appropriate experts in the near future. At least one fan saying, it's so sad to me that anyone thinks what Elizabeth Sweeney did is in any way admirable. I get that it's her dream, but it's also a dream of the thousands of elite athletes who train endlessly. There's nothing admirable about a loophole. Another saying terribly disrespectful, I'm sorry to hear someone from the USA would game the system like that, but not surprised either. But others, like Canadian skier Cassie Sharp, who actually won the gold medal in the women's halfpipe final, said if you're going to put in that time and effort to be here, then you deserve to be here as much as I do. My official response to any Elizabeth Sweeney haters out there is don't hate the player, hate the game. Elizabeth Sweeney didn't make the rules, she just made the rules work for her. And you know what? If you're looking for any advice out there, that there's there's a saying in sports that I think that people could use in their everyday lives, and that is, don't play your opponent, play the rules. What's in the rule book of whatever you're doing in life? For some things, like an actual sport, there is an actual rule book. In life, you have laws. And if you take the time to actually look at the rules, unlike other people who are just gonna rely on things like raw talent, then you give yourself an advantage, or at the very least, like in this situation, a way in where otherwise there would not have been one. So Elizabeth Sweeney, from one hustler to another, I salute you. And then let's talk about the situation around Black China. Now, if you're not familiar with Black China, she's a former stripper, model, turned reality star, uh, but overall seemingly a person that's famous for no reason. And you might have seen yesterday that she was trending all over Twitter, and it was because there was a one minute video of her performing oral sex on, at that time, an unidentified man. Now, as of right now, it's unclear who posted the first video. Black China and her lawyers say they're already asking the police to investigate the leak. At this time, she has not made any public statements, but her attorneys are speaking out. One of her lawyers, Lisa Bloom, writing on Twitter yesterday, revenge porn, posting a Explicit images without the consent of everyone in those images is a crime, a civil wrong, and a form of domestic abuse. It's also a way to try to slut shame women for being sexual. Girls have killed themselves over revenge porn. It's not a joke. And it's actually that part of the story and the general reaction I saw online that made me want to talk about this story. Because online, the number one reaction to this video wasn't outrage. It was making fun of Black China for being bad at giving head. I mean, this video got leaked and just seven minutes later, it was memes galore. We also saw a lot of people addressing the issue of the leak, saying China has no reason to be upset because she agreed to be videotaped, so she shouldn't be upset if it leaked. And we've talked about this before, I'll say it again, and it's not white knighting, it is just stating the facts, it is a consent issue. Just because you do something that makes it possible for someone to do something horrible to you doesn't make it okay. Like if you give someone a key to your house, you, you trust this person, and then maybe things go bad, and then that person gives copies of your keys out, that's not okay, you didn't give them permission. If you decide to film yourself in a sexual situation with one other person, 
That's a just for you thing. You're not consenting to the entirety of the internet seeing it. It can happen, which is why I advise if you're not okay with it, never film anything like this, but that doesn't put the woman or the person that is the victim in this situation in the wrong. I just think in general it's important to remember that uh, whether whether it be a reality star or whether it be someone maybe you don't like, when, when something illegal happens to someone, we, we, we shouldn't just cheer it on. We shouldn't make fun of the victim. Also at the same time, I kind of want to say anyone that's ever faked leaks in the past for a free, free promotion, which is essentially faking a crime. Fuck those people because their actions in the past have trained people to just believe that this is all part of the PR cycle. That said, for this specific story, we now have Black China's ex-boyfriend Michi coming forward saying he's actually an unidentified guy in the video. He's reportedly angry. He said he's never possessed the video that it was taken on Black China's phone. So as of right now, who posts the video, we don't know. A lot of people have been pointing to Rob Kardashian, this because he posted private photos of Black China on the internet before on all his own social media. And so that's where we are as of right now around this specific story. We'll see if there's anything that comes from the police investigation. But I, I, it, it was less about the specifics and, and more about the just grand scheme that I wanted to talk about. But from that, I wanna share some stuff I love today and today in awesome brought to you by probably one of the most requested shirts we've had in a year. Today we are releasing the Why Be Informed When You Can Use Your Feelings As Your Fact shirt. Perfect shirt for people that are tired of arguing with people who are using their feelings as facts and or the perfect gift for that favorite family member or family members on your Facebook timeline throwing out bullshit. You'll probably wear it not realizing you're talking shit on them. So if you want to snag one while you can, jump on this for this first run of the shirt. Link down below. The first bit of awesome, it's just because I'm still on a Michael B. Jordan kick right now. Complex posted a video going sneaker shopping with Michael B. Jordan. Then we had Seeker covering why do we taste sour flavors? We had Marvel releasing a video announcing fresh starts for 2018, saying new creative teams, new series, new directions, new beginnings. So hopefully there's some awesome in that. And we got the Honest trailer for Justice League. We've got the slow-mo guys putting out Rubber Wrecking Ball in 4K. We got a new trailer for season two of Jessica Jones. And if you want to see the full versions of everything, I just shared the secret link of the day, anything at all. Links as always are in the description down below. Then in potentially big news around gun laws and gun regulation, Donald Trump spoke about bump stocks today. After the deadly shooting in Las Vegas, I directed Attorney General to clarify whether certain bump stock devices, like the one used in Las Vegas, are illegal under current law. That process began in December, and just a few moments ago, I signed a memorandum directing the Attorney General to propose regulations to ban all devices that turn legal weapons into machine guns. I expect that these critical regulations will be finalized Jeff, very soon. So a potential change in coming. It'll be interesting to see what the debate in Congress looks like, but there's not much for me to add here because this literally happened after I was done with the show, but I wanted to make sure we included it. That said, whether you're pro-gun, anti-gun, I'd love to know your thoughts on this specific topic. Then, and potentially the sexiest story of the day today, let's talk about gerrymandering. Oh. What the fuck was that? Yes, gerrymandering. Let's try and keep it together as we talk about congressional district maps. Okay, I mean, seriously, if someone's not listening with headphones, someone's gonna come by. Enough of that. In June of 2017, a lawsuit was filed alleging that the Pennsylvania congressional district map was infringing on constitutional rights of voters according to the state constitution. This due to partisan gerrymandering. And for those new to the topic of gerrymandering, the definition of gerrymandering is to divide a territorial unit into election districts to give one political party an electoral majority in a large number of districts while concentrating the voting strength of the opposition in as few districts as possible. And long story short, what it ends up doing is it fucks with the proper representation of a state. And when you look at how some of the districts were carved up to favor Republicans, it, it doesn't even look like they were trying to hide it. Like, look at this one. This is a real district in Pennsylvania. It's nicknamed Goofy Kicking Donald Duck. And its districts being carved up like that that resulted in Republicans holding 13 out of the 18 congressional districts in the state, despite statewide voting being closer to 50-50. Now, on January 22nd of this year, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court court ruled that the state's congressional district map was unconstitutional. That decision stating that the map clearly, plainly, and palpably violates the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And the ruling gave lawmakers until February 9th to create a new district map, saying if they do not by then, the court welcomed all parties and interveners to submit maps. After this, we saw members of the state GOP enter an emergency appeal with the Supreme Court. The court rejected that request. And though the court didn't explicitly state why, some speculated it was because the decision considered the state constitution instead of the federal one. And then we got the big news yesterday. The Pennsylvania Supreme 
Supreme Court announces the new map using population and geographical compactness to redraw the districts. The decision stating that no revised map was agreed upon by the legislature, so it fell to the court. Ultimately, what we see with this new map is it makes seven competitive GOP-held districts more democratic. Three of the districts that Trump won by more than 20% could actually be competitive in the midterm. And what we could expect to maybe see is four to six of the seats switching to the Democrats' favor. And the court decision instructs the 2018 election to use this new map, and candidates have until March 20th to register for the primary. Now, of course, as expected, there were a lot of reactions to this news. Pennsylvania Governor and Democrat Tom Wolf saying, I applaud the court for their decision, and I respect their effort to remedy Pennsylvania's unfair and unequal congressional election. Former Attorney General Eric Holder and the chairman of the National Democratic Redistricting Committee said the new map is, quote, a major victory in the fight against gerrymandering in Pennsylvania and around the country. But at the same time, you had House Speaker Mike Torzai, Senate President Pro Tempore Joe Scarnati, both Republicans, saying in a joint statement, implementation of this map would create a constitutional crisis where the Pennsylvania Supreme Court is usurping the authority of the legislative and executive branches. Also calling the decision the ultimate partisan gerrymander, one brought about by the Democrat governor acting in concert with liberal politically connected litigants. And then we also heard from President Trump who tweeted, hope Republicans in the great state of Pennsylvania challenge the new pushed congressional map all the way to the Supreme Court if necessary. Your original was correct. Don't let the Dems take elections away from you so that they can raise taxes and waste money. And ultimately, I'm of the mindset of the closer we can get to proper representation when it comes to voting, the better. I hate that this has somehow become partisan politics. Both parties in the past have been guilty of gerrymandering. The Republicans just did a fantastic job over the past decade. And once again, like with the Elizabeth Sweeney situation, there's part of me that appreciates playing that rule book hard. But unlike in the Sweeney situation, it ultimately results in the taking away of someone's voice, somewhat the effectiveness of someone's vote. There's no reason that when you look to Pennsylvania, which is a very 50-50 state, that the, the breakdown in district should be 13 to 18. 50% does not equal 72%. Even if it was like a split of 10 Republican seats, eight Democrat seats, then you could be like, oh, okay, well that's just the way the split went. But here it's so obvious. And what I would like to remind the Republicans who are against this redistricting is that sometimes you end up creating your own future problems. People's opinions change, they evolve, different people come into power, different people will be able to pull the same tricks as you. One of the instances that comes to mind is when we look back to 2013, the Senate Democrats, they pulled that nuclear option. We only need 50 votes and then they lost their damn mind when the Republicans did it last year. But that's also probably gonna fall on deaf ears because for most politicians, it's all about the now. And actually on the note of only thinking about the now, I, I wanna talk about Donald Trump and Mitt Romney. Because in the past week, Mitt Romney announced that he's going to be running for a Senate seat in Utah. Yesterday, we saw the president tweet, Mitt Romney has announced he is running for the Senate from the wonderful state of Utah. He will make a great senator and worthy successor to Orrin Hatch and has my full support and endorsement. Mitt Romney responding, thank you, Mr. President, for the support. I hope that over the course of the campaign, I also earn the support and endorsement of the people of Utah. And understandably, people from both sides were kind of surprised by this. One, because since 2016, Mitt Romney has said stuff like this about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. He's playing the members of the American public for suckers. He gets a free ride to the White House, and all we get is a lousy hat. And I've seen some people say, well, of course he's going to say thank you. Why, why would he cause a fire? And to that, people pointed out that once again in 2016, Mitt Romney tweeted, if Trump had said four years ago the things he says today about the KKK, Muslims, Mexicans, disabled, I would not have accepted his endorsement. Now, as of early 2018, it appears uh, Mitt Romney is of a different mind, which is strange considering in 2017, he criticized the president around Nazis. Donald Trump, of course, had his infamous both sides comment after Charlottesville. Mitt Romney responded, no, not the same. One side is racist, bigoted Nazi, other opposes racism and bigotry, morally different universes. Also, maybe this is a super recent change because January 15th, 2018, he criticized the president. Writing, the poverty of an aspiring immigrant's nation of origin is as irrelevant as their race. The sentiment attributed to POTUS is inconsistent with America's history and antithetical to American values. And here's the thing, I don't care if you're pro-Trump, you're one of the never-Trumpers, which Mitt Romney appeared to be back in the day, how do you trust Mitt Romney? Because if you're anti-Trump, it appears that Mitt Romney, who has been so outspoken against Trump, has finally bent the knee, he's kissing the ring, and if you're pro-Trump, he seems like a wolf in sheep's clothing. But he's just going to do this to secure the vote, and then he's not gonna be on Trump's team when he's in the Senate. But I also wonder if this is part of Mitt Romney's strategy, because that was something that seemingly helped Donald Trump during the 2016 election. I knew a good number of people that when they looked to Trump, they were like, no, he's just trying to trick Republicans. He's just saying big, crazy shit like that wall, so so they're on board, but he's when he gets in there, he's gonna switch it up. He's our Trojan horse, so it's not crazy to think that there are Republicans who have been anti-Trump thinking, okay, Mitt Romney's our Trojan horse. But honestly, who knows? He's a career politician. Who knows where he lies? But that said, that's where I'm gonna end today's show. Of course, this is the Philip DeFranco Show. I, I give you the news, I give you my opinion, and then I wanna hear from you, whether it be the last story, the first one, anything in between. Let me know what you're thinking in those comments down below. And remember, if you like this video, you like what I'm trying to do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also, while you're at it, make sure you have that little bell 
check so you get a notification when we upload a new video. YouTube the past, uh, feels like the past three weeks, they've been waiting the damn time, like 30 to 60 minutes for the videos to hit subscription boxes. So the notifications always help. Also, you can follow me on twitter.com slash Philly D. I always update when we upload a new video. That said, if you did miss yesterday's Philip DeFranco show, you want to catch up, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you need something lighter, we have a behind the scenes vlog. We have the newest video right here. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love your faces and I'll see you tomorrow.